Hey guys, got some questions from Instagram, I'm going to answer them all today, doing a little Q&A video for the YouTube channel. But first, I need my phone because I won't remember any of them. That's a, f not a phone. That. One sec guys, we're having some technical, that's a Captain the Crush Gripper. Not a phone. Not a phone. That, that's a discus. Ah. This because it's heavy. Right, so, first question from Joseph. Advice for a beginner strongman. So, starting out in strongman, um, loads of different things you can do, different things to think about, but the main thing is you want to have fun. You want to enjoy your training, you want to have some heavyweights and enjoy training. Biggest thing I'd recommend is to train with a group of guys that are experienced. Thankfully, now with Facebook and everything, there's people you can get advice from, you can get coached, and all that's great. But when you're starting out, I think the best thing to do is try and get a good crew, guys, that train events regularly and learn from them. Uh, if that's not possible, then get a program f offline, on online, from the internet is a good idea. Um, loads of guys do online coach, and I do it. Uh, loads of different strongmen do it. That's a good idea. But generally, you want to get advice in person, not just to have a program, but to look at your technique. Other than that, you just want to be... Uh, you just want to be good, like, you don't want to uh, eat loads and have a bad diet in the name of strongman, a lot of people do that. Healthy diet, do your stretching, that kind of stuff. Uh, follow a decent programme, work hard, have fun, and you're going to get pretty far. Once you get to competing and you start getting a bit of a better level, then you can do more advanced stuff. But first things first, working hard with a fairly solid programme, and that'll get you a long way. So... I feel the tone of these questions might rapidly go down from here. What is the most a novice should deadlift before not being a novice anymore? If you're pulling over 300 kilos and you're in a novice comp, maybe something's going wrong somewhere. Now, it's not, I'm not the strongman police, although I seem to be most of the time. That's just a little bit of advice. That was Matt Frost asking that. And Ross Phillip asks, when should a novice move up? Whenever novice weights aren't challenging for you, you should move up. You might come third and really struggle in a lot of uh, heavier comps, which is fine. But if you've won a novice comp or if you come second but you see novice comps starting to get really easy, then move up. Um, I don't know why you want to stay around at novice if you're capable of a high level. I want to move up as soon as possible. So if you're capable of competing at inters or an open or in a weight class, then I think you should. Ross Phillips also asks... How many kilos in a nine pounds? How many kilos in a, a nine pounds? 4.1 kilos in a nine pounds. Last one from Ross Phillips. How ugly is Kevin Coyles? Kevin Coyles is a very strong man. That's what I'm going to say. Here we have a very serious question. Would you rather have the huge... The body of a human and the legs of a spider, or the other way around? Think I'd rather have the body of a human and the legs of a spider. Think of the reach. Think of the reach advantage there. Yeah, that makes sense. So Jamie asks, how did you start competing, and how should someone else start competing? I Well, when I got Strongman, I didn't know a lot about it. I watched World's Strongest Man on TV, but I didn't really know much about the grassroots level. There was a local novice comp over in Stocksbridge, so I had a go. Uh, I'd barely done any event training, but back then there wasn't much around. So I jumped in, came second to last, but I really enjoyed it, and I knew I wanted to get better. Um, I think some people stress too much about trying to train up and hit a certain level before you compete. If you want to compete and you can do any of the weights, just jump in. It doesn't matter if you only get one or two reps on things, you'll enjoy it. You're absolutely guaranteed to enjoy it. You'll meet a lot of like-minded people and it'll be a good day. Um, you can wait forever, but you're never going to be strong enough. I don't feel strong enough now. There'll be people lifting world records that don't feel they're strong enough. Like It's just not. It's never going to happen. You're always chasing a goal that's going to get further away. So if you fancy a comp and you feel fairly strong, you can hit a couple of the events, then just jump in. And you can always progress on there. It's your first one, so there's no pressure at all. It's, uh, I'd recommend anyone that's... Uh, in doubt to just jump in and try it you know nothing bad can happen 
Uh, so should someone, how should someone else start competing? Just look for a local. Obviously, at beginners camp, there's plenty of them around now. And there's a couple every weekend, so there'll be one local. Just set one. Maybe start, give yourself a couple of months and jump in. So Seb asks, ideal UFC fight, what weight class and what fighters? Khabib and Ben Askren at 165, but it has to be in Moscow. And that no easy way out from Rocky Force to be playing throughout the whole training camp and the fight. And afterwards, Khabib has to give a speech denouncing the Cold War. A more realistic option would be DC and John Jones at heavyweight. And I want DC to win and I will cry afterwards. But that's that's more realistic. Also, maybe TRT Vito against Yoel Romero. But without Yasada at light heavyweight, that would be a good one. Chris Brealy asks, do you eat the gherkin? I always eat the gherkin. Monster Munch flavour. Beef, pickled onion or flaming hot? It's got to be pickled onion. If it's not pickled onion, it's, it's not right. Monster Munch pickled onion, that was a good crisp. Matt Brignall, are you competing in CrossFit next year? Now he says this jokingly, I'm guessing, but uh, I have threatened to do a team comp with some of the guys from... Uh, uh, CrossFit Rotherham at Paleo Fitness so I might well end up doing it I don't know I do like dabbling in CrossFit what are your goals with powerlifting I saw you did a meet recently um, I'm not sure I did a meet I haven't got any strongman coming up in the pipeline so I want to do a powerlifting comp just to keep my own there's a British Championships in September I'm still not sure if I'm going to do them or not um, I'd have to change my training my some of my techniques, say, for example, didn't learn a low bar spot, change my bench up, just trying to maximise my total. I'm not sure if I want to do that, and I don't fancy competing if I'm giving away kilos unnecessarily, so I'm still undecided. So my goals are uh, undecided as yet. What else have we got? Mark Pearson asked, tips for deadlifting in a suit? I have no idea. I've never worn a deadlift suit. Um... It's not something I thought about too much when I when my deadlift gets better. I might put one on, but not not yet. Um, only thing I can recommend is trying to find a second hand one that's a little bit too big and work your way up to a tighter one. Um, but other than that, I'm really not the person to ask. So another question from Mark: When is your next strongman comp? I don't know the answer to that. Everyone keeps asking me, and I wish I had an answer. Um, Unfortunately, Britain didn't go too well, so I won't be going to Worlds. Um, I would love a shot at doing the Max Axel at Giants Live in Manchester. That would be brilliant. Um, I'm not sure if I can get an invite to that, but I'm going to focus on pressing soon in my training for a little bit and see what I can get up to. So that would be absolute ideal. But other than that, I'm not sure. If anyone wants to invite me to anything, let me know, because otherwise I'm going to be uh, getting withdrawal symptoms. So uh, if anyone has any ideas, hit me up. I'll uh, I welcome all all ideas. Matt Wood asks, what are your one, three and five year deadlift goals? So this year I want to pull 400 kilos. It's a big focus on my training right now. That's a massive goal in my current training. I don't really set two long term goals. I have them in the back of my head, but I find if you've got a goal that's going to take you four years, it's not really actionable. You need to take small steps towards it in short few months maybe year blocks um so i don't really know i don't really have a three or five year deadlift goal i need to keep improving but um yeah i don't really do long-term goals like that um just because i don't think it's uh it's easy to break down and see the progress matt would also ask top three world strongest man con predictions for 2019 i'm going to be boring and i think it will be the same podium as last year i think it'll be four Shaw and Klesikowski, I'm not sure between Shaw and Klesikowski, it depends on the event. I think Thor's going to win, he's looking super strong. Unless he has any really bad events, I can't see him dropping, dropping the title, but I could be wrong. Matt would also ask, favourite lift and favourite event? So, favourite lift, I really like push press. When push press are going well, it feels really good, getting a big weight over your head. Um, cause that's probably my favourite lift. Favourite event would be Farmer's Walks. Um, really fun, fast, 
dynamic, something I'm pretty good at, normally quite well. Um, it's just a good test, and when it's head to head, it's a good race and a good uh, show for the crowd. So I think that's my favourite. Ryan asks, "What would you say is the benefit of cardio in strongman?" Huge benefits to cardio and strongman. Obviously, there's specific and there's more general work. Specific stuff is going to come in when you actually in an event, say a medley, you've got 60 seconds to work as hard as you can. Um, if you don't know any specific conditioning work, you're really going to struggle in events like that and being strong is not going to be enough to carry you through. More general kind of, uh, say, steady state cardio, it's going to be really good for a full day of comp competing. I know often you get to the end of a five, six event uh, competition and you'll probably find a lot of people are gassing out and if you're in really good shape and really fit then you can probably carry on and say you might be 85% going into the last event where someone that's not as, not as fit might be 65%. It makes a big difference when you go into those final events. Also generally health wise it's just good to be in good shape. The healthier you are, I mean being healthy in life is a good thing to do anyway but the healthier you are the more often you can train, less likely to get injured and ill. Um, so it's just going to be more efficient for you. Everyone should be doing some kind of cardio in the training. Um, but the type of that will vary on your current goals. Someone. Kung Fu Lobster. Ah, yes. Kung Fu Lobster. Do you know of anyone who's done strength training with a hernia or after a after surgery? I do know people have trained after, with hernias and after um, surgeries. However, I'm not a doctor. I don't really know anything about it. So I'm sure it's doable. But... I would consult someone with a bit more medical knowledge than me uh, if this is something you happen to deal with. I don't want to say anything that could uh, cause you any further injury. Alex Buttress. Best deadlift programme you've done resulting in the most gains? So, the current deadlift programme I'm doing now is quite specific and it's uh, it's been interesting to do. Uh, gone through a few different phases, um, different heights, uh, stiff leg like deadlifts and then working onto the floor. However, probably the best one I've done when I was younger and not quite as strong was simply working up each week to a top set of five for a few weeks. Once I max it out, top set of three. Then I'd hit a go for a PB double and then I max out. I think if you're kind of in an intermediate stage of deadlifting, that's a really good one to do. Deadlifts often don't have to be that high volume um, if you're getting a lot of resistance working. So I think working up to kind of a straight linear periodization of top set of five for a few weeks, top set of three, top set of double, and then you'll be ready to max out. So that was probably the one that worked the most well for the longest for me. And that is the final question. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. My coach slash producer slash videographer is looking at me like that's quite a good time to end the video. Sponsored, mate. What's that, mate? Remember how sponsored you are. How sponsored I am. I'm very sponsored. I would like to thank all my sponsors, all of them, here and here and here. I'm going to make it challenging for him because he's got to make these all appear in shot. Or he might cheat and just have them all when I post at the end. But if he doesn't, he's going to have a challenge. I haven't got that many sponsors. I don't know why I'm still moving. Um, so that's that, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for supporting me. Um, and the next video will be out, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So, thanks for watching.